In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of logarithms. But to get warmed up, we're going to start with a few uh, problems about exponential functions. First one being, write an exponential equation to match the table of values. So we're looking for exponential equations in the form of y equals some a value times the base raised to the power of x. And using this table of values, I know when x is 0, y is equal to 3. Anything raised to the power of 0 is 1. So the base, doesn't matter what the base is, raised to the power of 0 is 1, which means my a value is 3. So I can rewrite my equation as y equals 3 times the base raised to the power of x. And now I'll pick a second value. and I'll probably pick an easy value like when x is 1, y is 6. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And anything raised to the power of 1 is just itself. So the base raised to the power of 1 is just b, which means my base is 2 and my equation is y equals 3 times 2 to the power of x. And remember as we're working with exponents and later as we're working with logarithms, we have to follow rules of bed mass. So this is not equal to 6 to the power of x. Okay, We can't multiply 3 by 2 because we have to deal with the exponent first. Let's make sure we're not making that mistake. Let's try a similar problem. Let's solve for the unknown. So I know that 81 is equal to 3 to the power of x. So I want to find a value of x that makes this true. And so I think about powers of 3. I know that 3 squared is 9, 3 cubed is 27, 3 to the fourth is 81. So I can rewrite 81 as 3 to the power of 4, and that equals 3 to the power of x, which means that my x value is 4. Things get a little bit more complicated in question B when I have 14 equals 5 to the power of x. I know 5 to the power of 1 is just 5, and 5 squared is 25. So now I need to find a number between 1 and 2 that might make this equation equal 14. So the best I could do is guess and check. So I'll try 5 to the power of 1.5. And I get 11.2. So I'll try 5 to the power of 1.6, see if that gets me a little bit closer. And now I get 13.3. 1. So let's try 5 to the power of 1.7. A little too far, I got to 15.4. So now I'm going to scale it back. Let's try 5 to the power of 1.65. And I get 14.2. And I could keep going if I wanted to to try and refine this number to get exactly 14, but I could be trying for a long time. And this is where we run into a problem with exponential functions. If I have an equation like y equals some base to the power of x, and I want to solve for x, what I need to do really is take the x root of whatever y is to get my base. But since x is unknown, okay, going back to that last example, 5 to the x equals 14. If I take the x root of 14, I should get 5, but since x is unknown, I don't know what to do. We don't have the algebra to solve this. 
what we're really talking about is the exponential function, y equals b to the x, and its inverse. To find the inverse of a function, we would algebraically swap x and y and then try to rearrange this to solve for y. And again, we don't have the algebra to do that. What we can do is use something called logarithmic notation to help us express the inverse of an exponential function. So if I think about the graph of an exponential function, graph of an ex exponential function looks like that. It has a key point at zero and whatever the a value is, and a second point at one and a times b. Usually, when dealing with an untransformed function, this is 0 and 1, and the point 1 and b. Graphically, we would find the graph of the inverse exponential function by reflecting the exponential function over the line y equals x which would give us a point at a and 0, or more commonly 0 and 1, and a function that would look like that. So here's the function y equals b to the power of x. Here's the function, the inverse function, x equals b to the power of y. And the logarithmic function, the notation we're going to use, is defined as y equals the logarithm base b of x. Okay, y equals the logarithm base b of x. Any exponential relationship can be written using logarithmic notation. For example, I know that 2 to the power of 3 equals 8. I could write this as a logarithm as saying that 3 equals the logarithm base 2 of 8. So the exponent becomes our answer. The base stays the base of the logarithm and the answer of our exponential becomes what we evaluate the logarithm at. Again, 5 squared we know that equals 25. I could write that as I could write that as 2 equals the logarithm base 5 of 25. You should have a logarithm button on your calculator, which will let you evaluate um, logarithms. Works kind of like the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. So, for example, if I have the logarithm base 10 of 0 0.01, first of all, base 10 logarithms are used a lot in math and science, and they're called. common logs and if you look at your calculator if you just have a logarithm button on your calculator 
the logarithm button on your calculator will use base 10. So you should be able to type in your calculator using your logarithm button, the log of 0 0.01 and then hit equals and you should get an answer of negative 2. What that means, 10 to the power of negative 2 equals 0 0.01. So the problem that we run into is when we have logarithms that aren't base 10. Okay, We probably can't evaluate this on our calculator. Newer calculators, maybe, but probably the calculator you have, no. So what I can do is realize that this is just an equation. where y is equal to the base 3 logarithm of 81 and I can rewrite this 3 to the power of y is equal to 81 and then we're just using trial and error again we know 3 squared is 9 we've done this already in this video 3 cubed is 27 3 to the fourth is 81 So our y value is 4, which means that the logarithm base 3 of 81 equals 4. So the big thing we should be taking away is that the logarithm function is the inverse of the exponential function. Graph looks like this with key points at 1 and 0 and whatever the base of the logarithm is and 1. Uh, has some conditions on it. The base of the logarithm has to be greater than 0 our y value is always greater than zero. In fact, there's a vertical asymptote right through the y-axis. And our base cannot equal one.